Radio Bristol News. More than a thousand workers left British Rail Engineering in Swindon this afternoon after receiving their last pay packet. The works officially close on March the 27th, ending a 150-year history of rail engineering in the town. In its heyday, owned by the Great Western Railway, the Swindon Works manufactured some of the finest steam locomotives in the world. Many of the workforce made redundant today are over 45 and face an uncertain future. The union said the men were bitter about the way that they'd been treated. There was always a pride about building railway trains that even the shipbuilders found hard to match. And for more than a hundred years, the men of Swindon did very little else. It's 26 years since the Swindon Works built a steam engine. The famous Castle and King locomotives, or the few that are left, have been recruited by the nostalgia industry. The works produced not only locomotives, but everything else bearing the legend Great Western Railway. Part of it was demolished years ago, yet the tradition of craftsmanship that went with it has left very deep roots. From the 1960s onwards, the works had to pay its way less romantically, mainly by repairing British Rail's diesel commuter trains. Until 1985, that was enough to justify some 2,000 jobs and almost miraculously sustain the old proud spirit of the GWR as well. From time to time, politicians or accountants would decide that there were better uses for the site and for the skills of the men and women working there. But the Swindon Works not only survived, the workforce went on believing that anything good mechanical engineers can do, they could do too. When British Rail announced last May that the works would have to close because there was not enough repair work to keep it going, the news was at first barely believed. Didn't Britain want their skills? A-Shop was reputed to be the largest covered area in British industry. Was A-Shop going to be silenced? As a reporter, I'd visited the place often over the years and had a sense of how they felt. You'll see that on the film, the other, the young lad turning the motor bearing. Well, I, I trust him to do anything at all. He's got all the skills that any lad could ever want. But I'm afraid as it is now, with the closing of the work, I just don't know where he can sell those skills. I'm not saying that there will be a job for everybody. I think it would be foolish to suggest that, that could possibly be the case. But what I'm saying is that I don't think anybody ought to give up hope entirely. Why should we employ you? Well, there's, there's obviously stock answers to these questions. I don't think there is. I, I think I each don't time... Think you can answer that without really going over the top. Well, I think um, you answered it very well, in fact, Malcolm, the way that you've dealt with it. That um, why should they employ you? You're actually going over your skills again, aren't they? Mm. You're obviously applying for a job that you're skilled in that area. Well, as a full-time chaplain in the Diocese of Bristol, this is my patch, and I've been connected with the rail works for something like 12 years now, on a regular basis, visiting in the works as an industrial chaplain. What effect is this shutdown having on the men you know inside the wall? Quite traumatic in many cases, uh, especially for the 45-year-old and upwards, who, for the first time in their lives, are now facing redundancy, not knowing where the next job is going to come from, uh, having great difficulty in even getting on the short list for many of the jobs they apply for. What effect is it having on them? I've just passed a person in tears, in fact, who after the twelfth rejection is now wondering what the future holds for them. But it's the sense of not being needed, wanted, valued. At 51, I'm on the scrap heap, he said.
The new Swindon is not dependent on the railway. The glass boxes go up and the multinationals move in as quickly here as anywhere. British Rail had become just another local employer. But the loss of 2,000 railway jobs still hurts. Swindon normally has to find 3,000 new jobs a year just to keep pace with the birth rate. This year, the town needs to do much better than that. It hurts most of all young men like Andrew Bowley, who's not long finished a railway apprenticeship. Now he's redundant. My family have been involved with the railways for the last four or five generations, and um, when it's about a stage for me to leave school, my father said to me um, that he thought an apprenticeship would do me good. My father started um, his apprenticeship with the GWR in the works, and he got a, a lot of it as apprenticeship in the sense that um, it gave him a good basis for life. He's always had a good life because it was a secure future, in, inside as it was called. And he just felt that an apprenticeship would do me good and step me in a good step for life, really. You're a skilled man, though. In a sense, yeah, but I wouldn't say I've got that many skills. Not, not as many as the predecessors would have had, or maybe the men in the work. There just hasn't been the, the work there, all the skills there. Not, not, not to be derogatory against the people who are in the works at the moment, or the men who have taught me, but it's just the fact that the work hasn't been there for me to learn the skills. What do you feel about the works being shut down? You've lived with the thought for a long time, haven't you? Have you got used to it? To a certain extent, yeah. I mean, for a person my age, it's totally different than it is for a person my dad's age. I mean, I can live with the fact that there's a good possibility I can get another job. For people my dad's age, and that's the main majority, I suppose, of the, the age of the men in the, the works between sort of 30, late 30s and sort of late 50s, is the fact that they've got no chance in life. To, to get another job, especially as present economic crisis uh, and employment figures as they are. And I feel sorry, really, for those sort of people, really, because it's, it's as they've been sort of stamped on. I mean, they've worked all their life loyally to a, a nationalised industry, so in a sense they've served their country in that sense, and they're just being put onto scrap beat. It's a total waste, really. Retraining, obviously, is the key to this, and I want to see the different agencies involved with retraining making a major effort to offer them alternative jobs. The New Swindon, of course, is a very wide-ranging uh, spectrum of, of uh, job opportunities. We have high-tech, which I suppose is the, the, the thing that now Swindon is becoming known for. But we have a wide range of, of other engineering firms. We have 3,000 people employed by Austin Rover in the town. We have other engineering companies, some of whom have set up in other parts of the old uh, Great Western Railway works and uh, so there's quite a few uh, engineering jobs where people could be retrained marginally between skills but with the basic engineering experience that they've had uh, counting for a great deal and then others may go into service industries um, even into the, the kind of new industries like electronics and, and pharmaceuticals because I never write off anybody there's a, a, a vogue these days to assume that anybody over 35 is finished but that's absolute nonsense and I've been very encouraged by the number of firms that I've talked to in the town as I go around week by week who've said no if these people of 50 plus have something to offer in terms of experience and they obviously have then we'll consider very seriously taking them on even though they would only be with us for 15 years or less. The railway dominated the old Swindon. There was a railway village, dozens of tied cottage homes that went with a job inside the works. In one of them, furnished now as a folk museum, some workshop men remembered life as it used to be. Men like Colin Bowne. Like all things, you, you remember the good times and put the bad things at the back of your mind. But um, there was fun and pleasure in the works to be had. And at the other end of the stick was you had to behave yourself or otherwise you got the cane, sort of. Uh, and I mean that the foremen, they were your bosses. And what they said was law, and there was no in-between. You respected them. Uh, you called them names, obviously, but you respected that them. That one, they were around. No, 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 no. You respected them, and, and in that aspect, they were still your friends uh, at the end of the day. You know, it's, um, it was a great life. It was a life that, that you had to know to enjoy, and, and it was something that was unique 
to us, I suppose. There must be other places in the country with a similar sort of setup that we had in there. But it was so self-contained. It was everything that the uh, well, the town ever wanted, I suppose. But things alter. Um, I think it's um, the most attractive railway works in the country. I think we had more visitors in Swindon than anywhere. And now it's all dead. It's finished. You know, part of my life is finished. You'd like to see a lot of it kept going so that people could still go around it, see it as a working museum. I would love that. It'd be great if they could only set up this working museum because it'd keep the spirit of the railway here, the Great Western Railway, or die unless somebody picks that up. Terry, you're one of the new generation, the generation that has been taught its skills by the Les Axbys. You've already left the works. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. With what sort of feelings? Um, well, obviously sad that the works is closing, as I think we all are, but uh, got no regrets about leaving. What are you doing now? I'm going to be a builder's labourer. But I remember being told that you got all the skills that the Swindon Workshops was famous for. What, uh, why are you doing a builder's labourer's job? It's uh, because I think there's a better life than working in the factory. There's no satisfaction working in a place where you know it's going to die sooner or later. Um, what work you do, is it going to be used or is it just going to be stuck in a store somewhere? Um, put away, there's no satisfaction in there. Terry Clifford's rejection of industry is bad news for Swindon. As the town turns its back on its railway past, it hopes to use talents like his to attract new firms, more jobs. Some 700 men in the works were over 50, hard to place even in a good year, though the man charged with attracting new firms to the town is cautiously optimistic about the rest. Douglas Smith operates nine stories high in Swindon's tallest tower. Perhaps those getting near to retirement may have to face the fact that unless they find it possible to do an odd job, their prospects may not be so good. And there's getting on for a third of the total who are in that sort of category. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I think that's true. But if we concentrate on the plus side, uh, this is one of many BREL uh, shutdowns that have occurred. The consolation I can offer to the people involved is, of course, that Swindon is probably the strongest economy in which such a thing has happened. And therefore, there are a variety of solutions. There are some with the sort of skill like electricians, which I believe can very easily be redeployed and quickly into existing uh, employment, existing uh, local employers. But there's only about uh, 120, 130 of them. Yes, but uh, that's one positive point. Many of them at the younger end with skills, and they're very great skills, that unfortunately aren't required in modern industry, will be retrained. And I can say, of course, that we've got money in principle from the common market to help in that retraining. We have a very big and efficient skill centre in Swindon and a very willing college. So I think, given a little time, we can do a great deal in Swindon to soften the blow. So there are a lot of retraining facilities in the town and £30 a week available for local employers to subsidise every new job created for a redundant railwoman. British Rail are giving one and a quarter million pounds to a new job creation agency. It's being set up with the local council and other local businesses and there's EEC money for retraining. But so far there's no sign of a rush to learn new computer skills in particular or to take advantage of the help available to men wanting to start their own businesses. The college principal says it could take 12 months for redundancy to sink in, but the help is there now. If you press that button there now, right, the machine should work. Some of them want very specific skills, carpentry and joinery, plumbing, electrical installation, electronics appear to be the main areas. But then there's another category who just want help, I think, in terms of how do you get another job. So we're running job search.
courses as well to help people get the skills that they'll want in terms of interview applications for other jobs. Clearly one of the issues is if you've worked in an organisation like British Rail for a long time, perhaps 20 or 30 years, you may not have had an interview, you may not have had cause to make an application for another job and to stop and think about how do I best sell myself. So we're trying to put on courses of that sort more generally as well. So help, yes but not necessarily much consolation to a man in his 40s forced to leap the gulf that divides the railway age and the world of the computer. I say the most difficult thing about writing out a CV is remembering all the dates. I should get into sort of middle age, if you like. Remembering back's a bit of a problem. Yes. That's why it's quite important to fill out that sheet first in advance of actually preparing the CV, yeah. to fill out the sheet with all the milestones in your life and your career, mm -hmm. and then start to display the CV. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is presentation. Mm -hmm. And also, another question you're going to be asked a lot is, how do you feel about taking more responsibility than you've got now? Mm -hmm. uh, remember we said that moving out of Brel and into the the bigger world outside where things are very much a case of time is money um, and therefore they're likely to want you to be happy to take on responsibility. And you've all come over marvellous, marvellously in the, um, the idea that the flexible approach, the adaptability, the willingness to take on new responsibility. The tragedy of this place here, of course, is for the last 14 years. We've had a situation where decisions affecting their lives, their working life and the future are taken elsewhere. And even now, there are many people in that works that do not un understand the real economic reasons for closure. You find your place in society by the job you do. So people have to feel that they are needed and wanted and valued. If any change comes about, we need to engage people. We need to be honest with people. We need to be just with people. They are not redundant. They are the same person as they always were. It is their maybe job or skill which is redundant in this day and age. Easily said, but coming to terms with the everyday reality of no work after a lifetime of skilled craftsmanship is going to be hard to live with. So what now happens to you? You're a tinsmith, aren't you? Uh, I've, yeah. I've seen you making tail lamps, the yeah. sort of tail lamps that the chief mechanical engineer of the GWR would have been proud of. What's going to happen to you now? <laughs> it's an unknown factor. I've got no, no plans, uh, simply because I'm 55 and I'm going to difficulty even trying to find a job. Maybe I'll find a part-time job doing something, and what, I, I, I don't know. Has the new Swindon got anything for you, do you think? <laughs> All these new multinationals, silicon no. chip firms and the rest? None at all. No, I've got no interest in, in anything other than probably pottering about on gardens or something like that. Uh, an apprenticeship is there to, not just to give you the skills, but it's also to give you a good stead for life, really. And it, I mean, it gives you a sense of self-discipline and also it does give you some other qualities of life. And what I've got out of the railways is going to be beneficial to me in my future. But I've really been turned off industry full stop. I and mean, I don't want to be in the same situation in another five years' time when I can't tra retrain. I'm at the age now when I'm only 21. Uh, I can go into education and, and do something else or I can go into another trade or be retrained by a company. But if I stay in the industry as I am at the moment, I'm going to have to take a drop anyway to get another job in the Swindon area. And I could be in the same situation in 10 years' time or five years' time, and then I might never get a job again. The high-speed trains that passed the Swindon works were neither built nor repaired there. Swindon always saw that as evidence of British Rail's failure to value the places it should there will be no undervaluing of the site. There are 150 acres of it in the middle of what has been called the fastest growing town in Europe. British Rail, who are guaranteeing 450 jobs for 12 months, say the land could be worth up to 16 million pounds. Several groups, local and national, are already bidding for it. There's to be a small firm's workshop and eventually a railway museum. 
but that leaves plenty of room for argument about the fate of most of the works. David Kent speaks for the local council. We feel that the closure is unnecessary, that the Swindon Works has been the victim of um, one works being played off against the other and the government's programme of privatisation in which work has gone out from the railway industry. We think it's a necessary closure and uh, really very sad indeed. The council would prefer to buy the site themselves and redevelop it as they have done in earlier closures of the railway works but because of the constraints that they're under from the government it's going to be difficult if not impossible but we are seeking ways in which this could be achieved. British Rail's engineering subsidiary Brell insists that shortage of work is the real reason for the shutdown but they are anxious they say to keep Swindon's engineering tradition alive. BREL has, has given a commitment that they will they will stay here for three years uh, attempting still to look after the interests of their former employees. Before we adopted this type of policy, quite frankly, we would have handed it over, declared it non-operational, handed the, the site over to the property board and declared it non-operational. The property board would have done what they wished with the site in the best pro corporate interest, i.e. Get make as much money, make as, much as, money as, as they could. We are not in this as a money deal. We're in this as initially a, a job creation deal. Graham Humphreys has heard all that before. He's a sheet metal worker and a fourth generation railwayman. As chairman of the Works Trade Union Committee, he spent most of the past 12 months fighting to keep Swindon open and denying British Rail's case for closing it. Along with a thousand others, he's facing his last railway payday, feeling defeated and unhappy. I'm finishing today. I've got no plans at this moment in time. And um, we shall have to see, probably have a rest for a little bit. It's been a little bit what I call hard work. So, you know, all these things being what they are, we'll have to wait and see. We'll even drive in here. So there we are, outside the Works Committee office for the last time. Yeah. Very unhappy occasion. So I expect it to take some weeks for it to sink into me that um, I shan't be coming here and doing what I've been doing for a long time and uh, representing people, or at least trying to, all that's gone by the board. Um, I'm sure that uh, the people We'll, we'll see that we, um, what's left of the place will go out with a bit of honour and a bit of style. That's what we want. Um, I just haven't got the words at this moment in time to describe probably the feelings that not only I feel, but certainly all the lads that's leaving here today. It's a very difficult thing. The unions had hoped the men would march through the gates, defiant and proud, but they don't. With their redundancy checks in their pockets, an average of £7,000 apiece, they walk out much like the end of any other working day. What was the feeling like in there this morning? Oh, shattering. Absolutely nerve-wracking. You know, it was just so far down in the dumps, you just couldn't get no further down. How do you feel? Hollow. Just a matter of shaking hands and cheerio and hope for the best. A few have found new jobs. Tony Parry, for instance, who went on the college course to learn how best to apply for one. And it's fallen into place for me. So I just feel sorry for the people, you know. 55 year olds, it's going to be really struggling. What are you going to do now? Um, in actual maintenance, if you do that. Yeah, I'm very pleased. So the course was useful? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Some of them are. Some of them are <laughs> a few souvenirs leave with them. Reminders of the comradeship they fear will be lost from their lives from now on. My name's Terry Lark. I'm a secretary of the Works Committee. I've been in this works now since 1947, and this is the blackest day that I think I've ever seen or ever will see, seeing the men go out of these works. And they presented me with this cup, which they built and uh, made over the years. Years ago, they used to make their own own cups and use these and this is the type that it is and it's a very sorry and saddest 
saddest day that I think uh, over the 150 years of GWR and these works has ever known. The pubs around the works fill up with railwaymen who must now become something else. These are electricians. Their talk is mostly good humor, but there's bitterness too. You know, majority of people this of our age are going 50. And the last of that, it's very, very difficult to get a job at 50. The young lads, like Dave said over there, probably may have a better chance. But you know, what did Margaret Thatcher says, and look, Norman Tebbit and his and his wisdom, get up and get on your bike. That, that's that's all very well. When you've got uproot families, where the hell should we? There's a perfectly good railway factory there, going to waste. Let's face it, all it's going to be done for is asset stripping. After three years, they're going to mill that lot down and sell the land off. We know uh, for a fact that uh, a local factory, Wills's, were taking on something like eight people for labouring, and uh, something like 1,200 people applied for it. It's not so easy. Ten years ago, I went in the railway from contracting. We got the JIB cars to the lot for contracting. Now, I went to a firm the other week, I rung them up, they said, come down and see me. I see him, I told him what the qualifications, JOB cards, the firms I work for, and contracting for 15 years up till I went in a railway. He turned around to me and said, how old are you? I said, 38 going on 39. He said, well, we're very sorry. He said, even though you can do the job, we prefer people of 25 to 30 to do the work because they are quicker. Even though you can do the jobs, they prefer younger men. What do you think of that? That's disgusting. No, I think I can still keep up with anybody now. But I just think it's pretty wrong that at 39 you're told that you're too old for a job that you've been doing ever since you left school. I think it's totally ridiculous. But honestly, I think it's one woman's hatred of railways, but honestly. With the smoke box, did they Outside the great works, some men seem reluctant to leave. For Ted Jeffries and Les Axby, the closure is a chance of early retirement. In a private language Brunel would have understood, they are still talking about steam trains. They used to put the, the frame on, onto, the, onto the jig and then line the smoke box up with the firebox. Oh, we didn't have anything didn't technical no. like that. No, no, <laughs> nothing did. technical like that. How did it come when you put it into the, the, the cradle? The, the you can't rebuild uh, the British Rail in Swindon. You just can't because it's, it's going out the gate today and I don't think it'll return. And I think all the local people who live around this area will start missing us quite a lot. All this is a, a pattern of life and uh, you just can't replace it.